Hello, I'm James McPherson and this presentation is a short proce of my doctoral research. In particular, uh, the documentation I'm using to consider the relationship between audience, performer and space in UK outdoor arts. The technique I'm using to document outdoor arts is time-lapse videography. These videos reveal patterns and rhythms which develop over longer periods of hours and days and are otherwise imperceptible in normal time. The beauty of a time lapse is that with one frame captured every second, replayed at 30 frames a second, it is possible to view a 30 minute show in a minute and a five hour event in just 10 minutes. The equipment I'm using was designed as a construction camera and as such is robust efficient and designed to be set up and left. The battery life is a fantastic three months. In addition, I found it easy to use with minimal training. The files it produces are simple to manipulate and edit using basic tools. By 2018, I'll have five of these cameras and therefore will be able to cover multiple angles in a festival. What I'm going to show now are three short films the results of experiments in documentation I made over the summer of 2017 using a single camera and a preliminary analysis using rhythm analysis, the framework suggested by French philosopher Henri Lefebvre. The first should give you an introduction to the project. This kind of analysis has several potential uses. It can explain to the uninitiated how outdoor arts operate and how a particular show works with space and audiences. It can reveal complex patterns and rhythms, help to apprehend common behaviours, focus a discourse on how social space is constructed, help to understand and question performance practices. It can improve programming decisions, develop reliable, evidenced statistics, and promote and advocate outdoor arts. The next film was shot at the reopening of Halifax's Peace Hall and begins to develop some analysis of the data. The Peace Hall is a large paved square surrounded by shops and restaurants. This is the Peace Hall in Halifax and in this clip there are five performances. Bottom left of the screen, Circus Raj is just about to finish. Top left of the screen, Osadia in the tent are performing throughout. And in green, fairly famous family, Grand Theatre of Lemmings and Desperate Men. All of these last three in green are just about to start, but we're going to concentrate on the Desperate Men because we have the best view of them. What we see here is John and Richard define their performance space and make direct contact with individuals who they position as a front row. This seeding of the audience is important when, as we see, Circus Raj finish and a proportion of their audience join to watch. An advantage of time lapse is that we can replay these significant moments to assess exactly what's going on and we see a flow of people entering from the left, joining the front row and respecting the performance area John and Richard have established. 
It is also easy to obtain numbers from the footage. We just dot all the heads and count the dots. So at this moment there are 73 people watching. Next I want to look at a kind of audience behaviour seen repeatedly in the footage, which I've called sampling. The example here takes a couple on the left who have just left the Fairly Famous' show. They enter and watch from the back in a slightly detached way, chatting and sometimes looking round. They watch for exactly five minutes and then wander off back towards the step. When multiplied many times, this becomes a rhythm or flow between the four shows. At the same time, there is another interacting rhythm of circulation around the shops on the outside of the square and through the entrances, top, bottom and left of the screen. The academic term for this is polyrhythmia. The next event we see is the end of a show here on the left. Some people are going to exit the square while others join the remaining three shows, and this interrupts and changes the existing polyrhythmia. Looking back at the desperate men who are working up to their finale, we see the audience is a similar size to when they started, but this hides some surprising numbers when footage is analysed in detail, frame by frame. If I stop the footage again and place dots on the audience's heads, we can see there are 76 spectators. Only 17 of these are the same people that started watching. But a surprising 225 people watched for at least 5 minutes and 365 people engaged with the show throughout its entirety. The new knowledge required of doctoral research in this project is located in understandings of how social space operates, close description of techniques artists use, joined up thinking about the relationships between space, audience and performer, an evaluation of the range of approaches in current use and observations around what works best. In the next film we look at a micro-performance moment and see how the technique relates to the momentary creation of a social space. Rhythm analysis is a useful tool for looking at the complex flows and behaviours of people in time and space. In this footage you can see that people are generally using the space as a thoroughfare or interacting in small groups. To look at how performance can interrupt these behaviours, I'm going to focus on musical Ruth. Matt enters the space from the right as musical Ruth, performs for just under two minutes and then moves off. If we watch again, we can see that the way he works here is to engage a single elderly woman and focus his performance entirely on her. Meanwhile, almost the entire space is brought together as witnesses and engaged in the performance. Watch one more time with the motion slowed down. It's clear to see how deliberate and skilled Matt's performance technique is. He occupies the centre of the space. He's perfectly aware of the effect he's having. And if we dot some heads here, we can count there are 103 people currently watching him. And that's over 75% of the people in the square. I would argue here that what we are seeing is a temporary repurposing of a pseudo-public space into a social space, what Henri Lefebvre calls cutting into the fabric of everyday life. The current stage of the research focuses on improving the techniques of rhythm analysis I've developed and preparing to roll out the project to a variety of events in 2018. I'm buying four more time-lapse cameras with better low-light functionality in response to feedback from a number of people involved in nighttime events. I'm also sourcing some freestanding high-level mountings, so I'm able to be more in control of the shot angle. The methodology is undergoing a rigorous evaluation, which will be examined by independent academics in the spring of 2018. As part of this process, I'm conducting an in-depth literature review and I'm making my reading list available online. I've also been conducting interviews with a representative sample of outdoor arts professionals to document a range of narratives and question how people relate to the sector and in particular to its defining quality, working outdoors. The substantive part of the research will happen in the summer of 2018 when I intend to conduct rhythm analyses at multiple outdoor events. I'm looking for a small number of case study partners in relation to my PhD, but I also intend to offer the research to interested parties who may find it useful. In order to partly support this work, I'm considering applying for a research and development grant from the Arts Council. 
I would be interested in hearing from artists who would be prepared to be the focus of a case study next year, or who would find the research useful in their own work, and from festivals and events who might be interested in commissioning a rhythm analysis for themselves. Artisani will be offering this service, but we would also be happy to consult, advise and offer training if you wanted to do it yourself. If you'd like any information to discuss being a partner to the project or simply to be kept in the loop with the research, please do get in contact. In response to the substantial interest I've already had, I've just begun a research blog where I will be posting updates. Just Google Artisani Research.